Good Mulder says that, that <laughs> the map looks like somebody like ate a bucket of crayons and threw up. I mean, sometimes it looks very complex and confusing. And I don't expect you to be able to read this, but this will just give me a, a, something to point at and talk about the colors. And this is color-coded, and the colors do have some meanings, and warm and cool colors as they go up, but I don't know if I have time to unpack all that, but let's just start with the basic stuff. So, the first color is beige. I'm going to lift it up a little bit. There you go. Okay, the first, the first color is beige, and this, this replicates um, human development in the first 18 months of life, and it's basically uh, uh, sensory motor survival stuff, you know, fed, going to the bathroom, you know, crying, bopping your head, learning to walk, you know, and, and language starts to emerge. So uh, there's not too many uh, cultural groups on the planet right now that reside at beige. Uh, uh, next color, and this, this was probably our, our ancestors 100,000 years ago and, and before that when the basic um, uh, society, well, I, I don't know if you call it society, but the way that human our ancestors organized were just very small survival bands and we'd go out and from our caves or our trees or wherever we were seeking refuge and we would grub around and eat things and try not to be eaten, okay? And that, that was kind of basically it. After that, about 50,000 years ago emerged uh, purple. And purple is a, it's a level of um, shamanism, animism, uh, magical thinking, okay? And uh, one to three years old uh, in children. In other words, uh, with a child like this, if I can't see you, you can't see me, that sort of thing, magical thinking, you think the clouds are following you or the sun rises and follows you through the day or something like that. And uh, in, in, a, in purple cultures, they were able to achieve a new level of organization, tribal band, blood clan, shamans that could propitiate the spirits and, and, and bring uh, uh, the, the buffalo back or bring the, bring the, the, uh, the plants back in the, or the, the, the sun back in, in the springtime, etc. And uh, so that's, that's basically purple. And you, you still find, what's that? Good mower right now. Okay. <laughs> still, still uh, you find some purple in, 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 uh, in uh, kind of primitive tribes that live in different parts of the world. And I, I read recently that there's still, they believe to be up to 50 tribes that have never made contact with Western civilization. So I find that fascinating. Okay. After that, about um, 10,000 years ago, red emerged. And red is the level, and, and all these levels begin to emerge when, when the preceding level is not really meeting the needs of, of the current conditions anymore. So you have a, another level that emerges. And with red is, the, uh, this is all pretty much egocentric, and I, I don't even know if you had a real sense of a, a modern ego back here. Uh, but at, at red, you begin to have, uh, it's very egocentric, it's very power oriented, it's warrior societies, it's powerful leaders, uh, those who are strong have the power and those who are weak don't have the power. And you can begin to organize people into hordes that move into other uh, territories and enslave and, and take other people's uh, property and women and children, etc. And uh, it's very impulsive. You see this in our modern um, culture in, in the gang. Um, the society and gang culture, uh, the, the Aryan Brotherhood, the Blood, the Crips, Norteños, Sudeños, M13s, all these different gangs. It's very kind of, you have powerful people and you follow the rules and if you don't you get killed and if you're, you're brutal and smart and wily enough you get to be a leader and control everybody else. So that's, uh, the prisons are full of this stuff. Um, as a response to this rather brutal, uh, bloodthirsty um, uh, state of affairs, and, and this is like three to six years old, okay? So uh, if, if you have a three to six year old and they like swords and guns and playing a Superman or army soldiers, cowboys and shooting Indians, and you're like, oh, that's awesome, but just, hey, it's appropriate for that stage. Humor them, they will grow out of it if you let them. <laughs> However, if you don't let them and you try to impose your higher values on these three to six year old, uh, they're gonna, at some point, they're gonna have to go back at an older age and, and redo those levels that you're, you and your kind of dumb wisdom are not letting them um, do at that point. So about 5,000 years ago you have the emergence of blue and in historical terms that's called the Axial Age and that's when the great uh, spiritual teachers such as the Buddha, 
uh, Lao Tzu, Jesus, uh, probably the end of the actual age, Muhammad, uh, emerged. And this was basically a reaction and, and kind of the, if you want to, the perennial, one of the perennial moral teachings is do unto others as you'd have them do unto you. So at, at this, it's, it's very impulsive. At red, I, I do what I want to get what I want, and I'm all that matters. To blue, where there is higher power, there is a, a prophet, there is usually a holy scripture, there's a holy teaching, there's a sense of hierarchy. Your ego is no longer the center of the universe. The higher power, God, uh, however that's framed, Allah is now the center, and people learn to behave and follow follow the rules. And there's a sense of, um, of humility and submission to a higher power, and there's also often a, a saintliness that emerges here. Some really good stuff. However, each each um, um, level has its good things as well as its challenges. And the problem with blue is it, that it is ethnocentric. There is only one truth. And if you are within the chosen people, however that's um, defined, uh, Islam chosen people, or Christian chosen people, or Jewish chosen people, or whatever, uh, you are worthy of love and respect and included in the care but if you're outside of that then you're not burning hell anyway so basically we do whatever we want okay so that's one of the problems with blue it's uh, a second person relationship develops you can care about another beyond yourself but you can't care about those others beyond your your um, um, your circle or, or your uh, your community or your church or your sangha however that's identified Okay, so that was a, a huge moral leap forward. Um, and we find this in, in people, I don't know, you know, from the time they're six to, to the time they're 80. <laughs> a lot of people never get beyond blue in our culture. And right now, blue is, it's, it's, it's a fundamentalist. It's mythic membership. Uh, it's pre-rational. Okay, science is not appreciated. Modernity is not appreciated. In fact, modernity is seen as a threat. So a lot of the terrorism that's going on in the world now is a reaction of kind of a red-blue culture against the threat, perceived threat of modernity. So you said that um, at the time when this was emerging about 5,000 years ago, there was also, um, uh, you said the Buddha emerged? Yeah. Um, or other prophets? Yeah, Lao Tzu, uh, um, and, just all the, 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 the these, these uh, spiritual teachers that emerged during, and, and the lineages that they okay, started. But they preached something that was much bigger than that. Yes. I know, but a lot of these, a lot of these, these like the Buddha and 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 the Christ and these figures, they had very high teachings. Of course, right after they died, many of their their, their followers were reinterpreted through a blue lens. Okay. So the, the, it gets to be very um, very interesting because you can have a true, profound uh, realization of emptiness, God at any of these levels, but you will interpret it through whatever developmental state you're at. Okay. And that really gets into more advanced integral theory. But let's just, that's a great question. But let's stick with this.